mics up, y'all. Okay. Yeah, it's real casual. You're fine. We I'm put still... on mics for. Yeah, <laughs> it's a backup. So okay. if, you, if it drops out, okay, we have okay, that okay, too. Okay. You always want to be super safe. Gotcha. Um, but no, I am so excited to do this to talk about cannabis to talk about Viola here with Al Harrington and AI. So I already know everything about the great story with your grandma and how she really got you like into it, wanting to do this business. I know your amazing story about smoking with Biggie. So I want to get into more <laughs> of the nitty gritty stuff, starting with why why we are calling it cannabis because I automatically like want to say weed mm -hmm. that's what I call it right. but I know it's really important that we're kind of destigmatizing that and calling it cannabis can you talk about why that is yeah I mean that's just you know that's just part of like you know the industry evolving mm -hmm. right being able to talk about it about what it really is because we all thought it was reefer yeah, you know, that's what I thought. Got it was, the gas. You know, mostly growing up, right? <laughs> then you know, and this younger generation is all about gas. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, we are now you know transitioning a lot of these conversations, and I feel like as we go into these different rooms and you know talking to church leaders and politicians yeah. and different things like that, we have to call it cannabis. Yeah. And just kind of evolve it from there. Mm -hmm. I know for you, you have probably learned so much throughout this process of like really getting into the business of cannabis. What's the number one thing you've learned so far? Um, the positive things. Mm -hmm. Oh, your know. mic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I see. I, 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 I oh, rely yeah, on this yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> see, we got you. The, the positive things um, that, that Al explains, explained to me mm -hmm. that it does and, and um, just killing the bad stigma. Mm -hmm. um, it was always... You know, coming up, it was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and just hearing all the positive things when Al is educating me um, on the cannabis. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a rookie right now at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, a couple years from now, you know, I'll probably know more than him. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> now, you know, we got some some premium flour right here. Yeah. And I said to my producer, I was like, you are quite literally getting your flowers, you know? Right. You now have your own strain. Tell me about this strain, AI. So I'll so tell you. Yeah, I'll right tell you more about yeah. it. He, you know, he, he know how to... Um, I can I can do it the ghetto way. He can do it the political <laughs> hey, I way. I like the ghetto he, way. He can, he... <laughs> so this uh this process uh, started probably about a year and a half ago. Yeah. To be honest, you know, to be able to create a strain from scratch, it takes about a year. Uh, we have really good partners uh, with these cultivators and genesis called Green Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, my VP of strategy, uh, Stephanie Aracle, is the one that helped me, you know, curate this strain. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that Alan told us in the beginning was that I just asked him, like, what does he like? What is his flavor profile, different things like that? And the first thing he said was, like, well, you know I like champagne. He was like, make something that tastes like Dom P. Mm -hmm. And when we heard that, I'm thinking, okay, um, that means we got to have some type of grape, right? When we think about our culture... In, in, in cannabis, like a lot of the exotic weed and different things like that, it looks it looks purple, different things yeah. like that. So we came up with Grape Stomper, crossing it with Secret Kush Mints. And when I also thought about, because this is a culture play for us, right, because he represents culture. So we've been very specific in regards of who we're really going after with yeah. this with this genetics, right? And it's our people, people that look like us. And our people like gas. They like really strong weed. So we were able to do this this cross of grape stomp, grape stomp and secret cushments, and it tests anywhere between 32 to 36 uh, percent total THC, mm -hmm. and you know it will definitely sit you down. Uh -huh. And when you think about the grape and the mint flavoring, you know it tastes like a little bit like champagne. So we've mm -hmm. had a lot of people without, you know, now this is like the first time I'm actually saying that was our intent. But there's been a lot of people that have reached out to me and said, yo, this tastes, actually tastes like a glass of champagne oh, when I you first it. hit it. Yeah. Right? So that was that was our motivation behind it. And with it being, you know, his first strain, and we're calling it 96, and we think about what he represented when he came in in 96, it was, he was a game changer, changed mm -hmm. the game forever, you know, on the court and off the court. And not only for himself, but even for every athlete that played in the league, because mm -hmm. at that point is when guys started realizing that this corporate life that they wanted us to live, that we didn't have to live, that we could actually be ourselves mm -hmm. and still be the star of the show. Yeah. So See, I think of all of those things when he we, did, when we it, did he this strain. Well, See, right, and yeah. I, I would have just said I wanted it to taste like Dom P <laughs> and, um, and had to be a strong gas. <laughs> <laughs> but was that accomplished? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, it was yeah, absolutely yeah, accomplished. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about the role of weed in the NBA. You know, I thought it was really great how last year during kind of the COVID season, they suspended random 
testing uh, for cannabis. Do you think there will be a day in the league where that is completely done? No more random testing. It is a substance everyone can use. Do you see that day coming potentially? I think it's now. It's already happened. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously year three now because you mm-hmm. had the you had the uh, what is it the bubble mm-hmm. at all of last season, and then mm-hmm. you had this season starting. And you know, I think with the NBA is pretty smart. They're not addressing it, right? They're not saying we're taking it off the ban list. Mm-hmm. They're just saying we suspended it, yeah, right, and kind of just see just where it goes. Suspended forever. But I wanted, <laughs> I, just, I would like to just take this time just to say that you know I really uh, give the players a lot of credit mm-hmm. that none of them have abused this opportunity, which I didn't think they would do anyway. Because I always say, like, you know, we all have access to liquor, mm-hmm. right? And when I know I got to come compete against AI, I'm not getting drunk before I'm about to play. <laughs> and I'm right. not going to get high before I got to guard AI, yeah. right? And I just think that all the guys are very professional, and we understand that. And I think that these guys have done a really, really good job at that and being able to keep it separate. Right, mm-hmm. because they're definitely using. I know for a fact. Oh, for sure. You know, we 100%. get we get calls here and there asking for product, mm-hmm. and you know, it's just a beautiful thing. And I just think that you know, for athletes, it was something that needed to happen. We needed an alternative way to deal with a lot of the issues that we deal with. Mm-hmm. And in the past, it's only been liquor, right? Or it's been you know pharmaceutical drugs and you yeah. know the Vicodins and different things like that. Because you know, we deal with a lot of things, and most people forget that we are human beings. And I think mm-hmm. that's coming out a lot now with the mental health and mental health issues mm-hmm. that are, you know, being raised all the time because we seem like Superman and we got so much money. It's like, why, how, what kind of problems do they have? But no, we have the same problems you have. Yeah. We just absolutely. actually have money, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, which adds more problems. <laughs> which as adds well. more problems. Yeah. It doesn't make things easier. So just, you know, guys, great job. And I'm so happy that the league has taken this stance. And, you know, hopefully one day, you know, Viola will be on one of these. Yeah, I love it. it. (laughs) Can you talk about a time in your career where you would have benefited from there not being this stigma around weed, but about it being okay, you know, to have cannabis while you're a basketball player? Yeah, I probably didn't have to go in the program then. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was it. Um, And and I could be free with it like I wanted to be back then. You know, like I said, it was this stigma that it was so bad Mm -hmm. back then. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, I went through going uh, through the bad boy thing when I first came into the league and mm-hmm. the fact that I had all these guys with me and we smoked, you know, marijuana and this, that, and the third. And it was like you was labeled as a villain, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, or the bad guy um, for smoking. And um, that's what I remember the most, you know what I mean, that I had to go through, you know, with that. I could hear the people in the crowd, you know, calling me weed head and on the road yeah. and stuff like that. So... <laughs> You know, it was bad, you know, because yeah. I, cause I had, um, when I first got in the league, I think when I was a rookie, um, I had got um, stopped and I had some some weed on me. Mm-hmm. And I actually went to jail for it, you know what I mean? And now, you know, all these years later, look where we at and look how far we've come. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even just going off that, I know you were a part of the group of, of people who wanted to write a letter to Biden to have him pardon, you know, nonviolent offenders who, you know, were associated with cannabis. And there's very obvious racial disparities when it comes to, you know, being arrested, being put into the system for marijuana. I think black people are four times more likely to go to jail for having um, cannabis than yeah. a white person. Yeah. So can you just talk about kind of how you've seen that shift and how in some ways it is kind of frustrating how other groups of people are profiting off this thing that we so often have been victimized um, for using. Yeah, I would like to just start with just New York. You know, mm-hmm. since New York has decriminalized and made it legal, uh, arrest in the black community is down 95 percent. Insane. Ninety five percent. And then when you think about cannabis arrests in other places where black people only represent, you know, 20, 30 percent of the population. Mm -hmm. And we're still the ones that invested, you know, 85 percent more than you like to your point. So it's, it's definitely a huge issue. And that's something that obviously with this partnership and everything that Viola stands for, Mm -hmm. being that we are a cannabis company with purpose, is all about changing the stigma first, Um, you know, creating more opportunities for people of color in the cannabis space. Mm -hmm. Because to your point, there's now billions of dollars being made and the people that are making it don't look like us. You know, cannabis was used to destroy our community. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, they're still keeping us out of it. 
right, mm-hmm. through all these different regulations and different things like that. So we need to change that because this is generational wealth at risk. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been so many opportunities, other things, industries that black people have pioneered, you know, rice, sugar, cotton, uh, alcohol, the lottery. Like yeah. Numbers, we created the lottery. We have no ownership in that. So we feel like there's a huge, we have a huge issue with that. And I honestly feel like if we don't do the work, it won't get done. Because I think there's a lot of window dressing with people saying they care about social equity and they care about mm-hmm. black people getting the opportunity. And just saying it. They're just saying mm-hmm. it, right? Because And it's just checking a box. Yeah. Almost, right? Mm-hmm. So we're, we're here to kind of put whole people accountable for that. And, you know, we're trying to do it through our work the work that we're doing on a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys are definitely pioneers in this space. Shout out to y'all. This is this is super, super exciting. Speaking of pioneer, you know, we have a huge pioneer um, in basketball. I've been ex- so excited to do this interview. Um, and yesterday I actually called James Harden because I was really excited. I know that how much he respects you, loves your game, looks up to you. And I asked him if he had some questions that he wanted me to ask you. And he wheels returning he's like there's so many ways i could go like ai has meant so much to me in my life so i want to ask you some of the questions that james had for you all right okay Okay. so his first one which is something i wanted to delve into as well he said can you ask ai how often he thinks about not having a title um i never think about it really never until i hear something like that question. Yeah. <laughs> now you're like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can cuss your butt. <laughs> came close, tried, but you know, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you why I don't. Because look what God has done for me. You know what I mean? I come from the mud and ended up being the first pick in the draft mm-hmm. of out of all of these people in the world. I'm the number one pick in the world. Rookie of the year. Um, MVP of our league, um, all NBA, um, all-star game MVP, uh, Olympian. You know what I mean? Like, I've done so much, um, changed the culture in basketball, in the NBA. Look at all those blessings that God did for me. Look at all those things that he did for me. Just getting drafted would have been enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just being on a team would have been enough. But all those accolades, all those things that I was blessed with, all those accomplishments, mm-hmm. I didn't want a championship. Um, he didn't want that for me. You know, obviously he wanted all those other things for me, and um, he made me so proud of, um, first of all, myself, but my, my mom, my dad, the people that raised me, um, all of the people that helped me, because you don't do it by yourself. All of those people that, that helped me, all of the little league coaches that I had, um, all of the teammates that I had from, you know, from little league all the way up to, you know, college, you know, teammates, the guys that set the screens for me, um, passed me the ball, the trainers, you know what I mean, the, the medical people, everybody, you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's why when I, when I became a Hall of Famer and I went up there and I talked about, you know, the ups and downs that I went through in my life and as a as an athlete, um, a lot of people stuck with me. A lot of people, you know, went away, but a lot of people stuck with me. And that's what it meant, why it meant so much for me when I went up there and said, now, you know, y'all are Hall of Famers too. Because yeah. I am. You know what I mean? So it 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 bothered me that I didn't win one. And um they try to separate um the great players from the other great players because some of them didn't win championships, mm-hmm. but I won in a, in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Do you, do you all think we maybe have too much of an emphasis on ring culture? I, mean, yeah. I, I don't think so okay. because that's the ultimate goal is a team game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, and that separates the best from the best. It does. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, a, that's, that's something tough because I, I, I got there, but I ran against, you know, a juggernaut <laughs> with Shaquille O'Neal and mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant. You know what I mean? And they were so great that they made everybody around them, you know, so much better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were a great team, but we just got beat by a better team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I, I had Chris Paul on my show last year, maybe the year before that. We were talking about championships, and he's like, you know what? I want to be a champion in life. 
Like, you know, it means more to me to be a, you know, a great husband, a great dad. I, he's like, I obviously want that, but there are so many other things that I'm also pining for as well. And, and that's my little man. And yeah. I understand him wholeheartedly. You know what I mean? But playing that game, the ultimate goal is to win it. Is to win it all. Yeah. You know what I mean? We all want to be champions off the court. We always we want to be the best. I, I I can't stand when people say, you know, I don't care about what nobody think about me. Whatever. Yeah, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't. I do. You're not just gonna call me anything or say anything about me that's not true mm -hmm. and think it's not gonna resonate with me. You think yeah. it's not gonna bother me. Um, but. We all want to be champions in life. We always want to be the people. Like I always say, you know, I can make a mistake. I just don't want to make it twice. Mm. You know what I mean? So we always want to be not the perfect person because, you know, there's no life being a perfect person because you yeah. can't learn from nothing. You can't be strong. Yeah. You can't, you know, overcome. You can't you can't do any of those things and, and, and test who you are as a person if you have a perfect life. Yeah. But, you know, we all want to be champions off the court, but I damn sure wanted to be one on the court. Yeah, uh, I know. But, you know, that's what everyone says. It's like that. That man deserved a ring. He yeah. really, really did. I fought for it. That's, that's, that's the only thing that makes me feel good at the end of the day. I can look at myself in the mirror and know that I played every game like it was my last. Mm -hmm. Well, that was one thing on the phone James was saying that I think resonates with him so much with you and why he feels like there's kind of this relatability with you is he feels like he's misunderstood. Right. Um, he feels like he is maybe judged in some ways. And his next question was, how do you think your career would have been different if it was like this social media era, you know, where everyone has an opinion, can talk about you. All oh the time? man, way more out of control, out of control. <laughs> yeah. Out of control. And I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. You know what I mean? Yeah. My Instagram, instead of 10 million, it would have been, 50, 60, 100 million, you know what yeah. I mean? You never know, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to trade the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It would have been too out of control mm -hmm. um, back then. And God know what he's doing. Oh, so yeah. I, I trust, I trust that, that part right there. I know what he, he know what he's doing. How should current NBA players deal with being judged by others? You concentrate on the people that love you. If, in the NBA, it's going to be what well, my outlook was. It's going to be millions of people that love you. It's going to be a million people that hate you. Concentrate on the ones that love you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's a lot of people to concentrate on. If, if, if you know, you concentrate on millions of people, yeah. then you ain't got no time to be concentrating on the ones that hate you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you concentrate on the ones that love you yeah. and, and know who you are, believe in who you are, and love who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um I love who I am as a man, who as as a person, as the the person that I involved into, the family man, the the friend, the business partner. You know what I mean? Um, love being yourself. What's wrong with being you? Everybody else in the world is taken up. There's only one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. 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 Well, you know, one thing I love about both of you is like. Y'all aren't haters, right? A lot of, like, the older generation <laughs> of NBA players, they want to be like, we were the best. This new generation, we not. You know, and right. I think that it probably is, you know, difficult to see the changing of the guard of some things, you know, mm. seeing the new wave and understanding, okay, well, mine is maybe a little bit of the past. Do you agree that it's kind of hard for people to, to let go of that, of that time? Yeah, I think it. I think it is for some, right? Yeah. But I, I think for me, I don't know if it's different for him because he came in as a number one pick or whatever. But like, I kind of experienced that with some of the older players I played with, right? Mm -hmm. And I just kind of made it a thing of like, I'll never be like that. I won't be old and bitter, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just gonna take care of my business, and when the game is done with me, it's done with me, and that's fine. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And you have to just look at it like how I look at it is, we've just continued to push the ball forward to now what you see now and all mm -hmm. the success and the contracts and different things like that, right? I want that for our, for our little brothers. You know what I mean? Like, this is a fraternity. And you know, how I look at every player that is in the league, that's my little brother. Right. Any mm -hmm. of them can get my ear any time because of what we've done was so rare. You know, it's only mm -hmm. 450 of us. And when we came in, I think only like 400 during that time. Yeah. And it's 30 million people that have NBA aspirations. Mm -hmm. And there's only 450 of us now. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, it's always been about that that camaraderie and just, you know, looking at 
the players behind me is just being little bros. And that's right. why I think for me, you know, I'm never that hater, as, as you say. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a fan. And you, you're, you're a fan. Like, I was a fan when I was playing. Right. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of those guys. Like, I get my popcorn and, you know, <laughs> my um, NBA TV and I, I watch it and, you know what I mean? I, you know, watch all my favorite players and, you know what I mean? Like, and then at the end of the day, you ain't want nobody to treat you like that. Yeah. You didn't want nobody hating on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so why would you do it? And then that go back to what I was saying. When you look in that mirror, it don't lie. Right. The truth going to come out. You look right in that mirror. Right. Yeah. And, and it ain't going to stop nothing. Right. You being upset and being bitter ain't going to stop. Nothing. Ain't going to stop nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You look in that mirror and you will see the word hater written right on your forehead. <laughs> yeah. and you got to walk around and live that. You got to you got to live that fake life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what he said about them being our little brothers. I love that. I love being 46 years old and and they come up to me and say big bro and they say unk. You know what yeah. I mean? Cuz honestly, I look back at the guy that made me want to play the game, Michael Jordan. Like, how could I ever hate on the man that gave me the vision yeah. that made Allen Iverson want to play basketball? And how could I ever say or hate on him? Yeah. Like, the guy. And I would it would break my heart if he was to, to hate on me. Mm -hmm. And I think the same way about how the younger dudes feel, they grew up off of me. So, you know, me hating on them, that probably would crush them, man. Yeah. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it anyway, but I just, just <laughs> yeah, thinking really about it, it. That's, yeah. that's terrible. Tell me something that a younger player has come up and said the way that you have either impacted their game or their life that like you've never really said before that really sticks with you, that you remember. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So many of them say that and how much I inspired them and, and how much, you know, my size, you know, they thought about not being big enough, tall enough, strong enough. You know what I mean? And, you know, how I in impacted their life mm -hmm. and, and, and made their dream come true, you know, just by believing um, in themselves like I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just the why not factor. Why not me? You know what I mean? Why not? Yeah. And you only live once. I mean, that's what I, I think. I don't know nobody that died and came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, and if I did, when I, if I died and came right back, I would rather be me all over again. Mm -hmm. Just probably a polished version, a little yeah. bit better. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> a way more polished version. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know, obviously, the game has evolved in a bunch of ways. I want you guys to tell me a way that you love the game has evolved and a way that you kind of wish stayed the same. What I like, I just like the uh, skill level of the game. Yeah. Because I watch, like, you know, I watch a player do a, uh, in between, like, tween as they say tween mm -hmm. and then end up over there like it's just amazing like how did you like what made you possess you to try that and it's not yeah. a travel you know so i just really just like how the game has evolved mm -hmm. and i also and it's funny because i try to figure out sometime like how because like you see now girls are dunking more mm -hmm. right like i'm seeing in high school level you know i watch a lot of little highlights though overtime and all these different whatever things and you see girls dunking i'm like how would they and i'm thinking it's like it's seeing is believing like he said like how a lot of kids saw him, saw what he did, and it gave them the confidence that yeah. they ended up being in the show. Yeah. Right? So I just think that just I, I just really enjoy how the the game is just truly really evolving, mm -hmm. and just not and really just sitting back, kind of thinking like, where's it gonna go? Because I got little boys that are six and four, and I want them to play, and I'm thinking like, what do I start working on them with now? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? so like many, how yeah. is so much yeah. versatility in the game now. So, uh, you know, that's something that just really impresses me about, you know, this, this day and time. Yeah. I think I, I, I always wonder this. If you were playing with the way that basketball is now, do you think you'd be a better player, same player, less player? I would, I mean, just betting on myself, I would say better, mm -hmm. better player. Because yeah. it's more wide open, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the game is it's, it's a lot more wide open. Um, the court is spread big time because you got big men mm. that can um that can shoot now yeah you know what i mean that's why you know the game has changed um like what i was saying you got guys six nine six ten he basically kind of started that you know with being a big man that can handle the ball like that on the perimeter 
But you got KD seven feet and he handled the ball like a point guard. Yeah. Like how do you guard KD? Yeah, that's KD. what I'm saying. You can't this I <laughs> mean, like Steph Curry is <laughs> in he's 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 not human, he's different. You know what I mean? Like that's what I love. That that part of the evolution of the game. Just seeing it changed so much. You know, people talk about my handle and stuff like that. Like I was not handling the ball like Steph and Kyrie and guys like that. Like they are doing out of this world things with the ball. You know what I mean? But, you know, in this new wave, I would I would just think that I would have gotten better and, you know, did some some of the things or even more than I was doing then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like now, when I was playing, you know, when I was in college and I came out, my teammates used to always say, well, damn, you know, Chuck, when you get to the league, they can't um, run a box and one on you. They can't run any zones on you. And it's down the third. And I was like, damn, that's right. They got to play me one-on-one all game. I'm going to have a sporty every night. Yeah. And then, you know, four scoring titles in. Then all of a sudden, now they got <laughs> zones now. <laughs> all these gimmick defenses. Oh, yeah. Now they, you know, double team and every time yeah. somebody touched the ball. So, you know, I might have I might have had something to do with Right. Them going back to the zone because you remember how in the NBA it was never you could never play right. zone. So you start killing one on one. Then you got this dude six feet, one hundred and sixty five pounds with the scoring <laughs> titles. Hold on now. We got to So you know we gonna change the rule all the way. Right. Now you can run a zone. <laughs> and you know I played in the East, so we played against you in the playoffs. I felt like my first three years, and it used to get so bad in the film session. But like you know what? Just let him score. We just stop everybody else. <laughs> yeah, but it's so crazy to think about things that are kind of like the AI rule. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that really could be one. <laughs> we also know dress code. Like, the, all those things, like, the impact that you had, the things that changed because of your presence is just, I think, really cool and just speaks so much to the legacy. But you see how, but you see how dope it is? I mean, may you rest in peace. You know, with him changing it, with him changing the dress code, it was like, I mean, it was like you taking the identity of these people away because nobody play the same. We don't play the same. Mm -hmm. We don't look the same. You know what I mean? So why should we dress the same? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And my mentality mm -hmm. all was always when, when, when I was coming in my rookie year, I was like, basically now I can buy all the clothes that the guys from around my way yeah. want and wear anything that I want to wear because I can afford it now. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to dress like this. When I was leaving from the arena, I was going to the club. I won't go into church or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when, when, when I, you know, coming up when, where I'm from, when you wore a suit, you was wearing a suit to church or a funeral mm -hmm. or something like that. You know what I mean? And my whole thing was when everybody saw me dressing the way I was dressing like I wanted to, like, and everybody started doing it. The NBA was like, hold on, you know what I mean? And it, and it gave us, and I know what it was. It was like kind of a thug look. Yeah. You know what I mean? When everybody was wearing suits. I, when I came up, I never wore no suit to the park mm -hmm. to go play basketball. I wore a sweatsuit or mm -hmm. whatever. You and know the what clothes I mean? don't make the person. No. Yeah. No. No. What people, when people go uh, rob a bank and all that, what they have on? Suits, yeah. don't they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? And... Now <laughs> it's beautiful. You might not like what these guys are wearing, but it's beautiful. You know what I mean? Because they wearing and expressing themselves the they way they want to. not wearing the skirts, though. I, I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Skirts are good. I love the fashion. I'm not going I love there. It. Own your, you own your own look. I'm into it. I'm I love there. playing with fashion. I'm not going there. <laughs> but I love it. It's beautiful because I like to see all, everybody with their own. They got their own swag and their own personalities. and mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I yeah. love it. I love it. But, you know, you look back on it and it's like, you really think about, like, the psychology of why what you looked like scared so many people and how bad that is. How bad that we thought we had to change people because we felt so unsure about one person. Because they never seen it. People mm -hmm. are always scared of something they've never seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless it's beneficial to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless it makes them feel good. But if it makes you uncomfortable in any way you're going to have a problem with it, especially when you're a high power. You know what I mean? Yeah. We used to generations of everybody looking 
like this. Everybody's supposed to look like Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I wanted to look like him on the court. I wanted to look like a superhero. Like, I don't understand why guys right now wear different color shoes in their uniform, but that's the new era. Yeah. I always looked at it like what Superman wore red, white, what was red, yellow, and blue. Right. Batman yeah, wore, yeah. you know, <laughs> oh it, uh, yellow and black, and yeah. Spider-Man wore blue, black, and red. You know what I mean? They all matched all the way down. Yeah. And that's the way I played. When Mike played, he matched his shoes, matched his uniform and all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But it was weird, too, with the whole thug thing, right? Because when you think about it, like, what we were wearing, right? Like, we were wearing $1,500 shoes. Right. $500 jeans. Cost more than the suits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wear more than the suits. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. that whole, why has it got to be a thug when I'm wearing yeah. something, like, but that's not. They never, but they never, they never yeah. seen, they never yeah. seen a do-rag in a hat. Like they never, they they never seen it, and it got scary. You know what I mean? I remember being put on the cover of magazines when I was the face of the NBA, but they would airbrush my tattoos off. Right, yeah, like I remember right. those things happening. Which is wild. Yeah. Like they're taking parts of you. Yeah, we want some of you. We want your game, and we want some of you. We don't want the cornrows. Now <laughs> we don't want the tattoos, but everything else, you know, we we cool with. And everybody was making a big deal about my cornrows, like. I would just, you, we can curse over here? Yeah. I was tired of people fucking my hair up on the road. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, I was getting haircuts and they were destroying. I was like, okay, if I just grow my hair out and get cornrows, then I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And that was the only reason I did it. It ain't had nothing to do with mm -hmm. me trying to look like a thug or be, or be a thug or nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? I was just tired of people messing my hair up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I ain't had them problems. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, one thing we grew out of that I'm like, ooh, it's good. We got no more 10 sides is too big for AI. Ooh. Party is over. Yeah, that's right. My teammates used to get mad as hell at me. Like, I used to go in big and tall and buy everything up. Wait, so, wait. You really went into big and tall? I used to buy big 4X t-shirts, size 40 that's pants. That's wild. And they used to go in there. They used to come in there. I'm talking about our big men on the team. Yeah. And they used to, at the practice, I would beat them there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I would buy everything, and they'd come in there and get mad at me because I would Buy up all the big clothes. Did you just like the look? Like, did you want to look like you've been kind of swallowed by by your clothes? It was in style, and then I was, you know, I had the the probably I had the little man complex because <laughs> I always wanted the big old Rolls Royce and the, yeah. the biggest car, and you know what I mean. I was one sixty five then, so yeah. you know I wanted the biggest clothes. I didn't want to look small, yeah. smaller than everybody else. So <laughs> I don't know. And it was a style back then. I don't yeah. know who, who I. I don't know. It was just the guys from my neighborhood used to dress like that. So I used to dress like that. Some it's iconic fine. looks, though. It's like, it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. It yeah, but out. when you look at it now, You're like, your head look like Beetlejuice, like the <laughs> smallest head, <laughs> and your body just, your clothes just big. Look crazy. <laughs> look crazy. Okay, so as y'all can see, he gives some really good quotes. Uh, but one of my favorite quotes of yours, you said, I'm not a point guard, I'm a killer. Right. I want you to tell me five guys playing right now. You're like, they're killers. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, James Harden. Um, James Harden. Um, What's the smile for? Because I know a lot of killers. Yeah. Um, Bradley Beal is a killer. Oh, uh, Dame. 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 Dame's the killer. Certified. Yeah. <laughs> Certified. Yeah. Oh, why are you getting so excited about Dame? What about Dame? Because Dame just, he's a monster with it. Like, he's, he's, um, he's kind of, Steph is just, just bad as hell. But Dame just a rude motherfucker. Like, he just rude. He's just disrespectful. He just yeah. do anything, just... I mean, pass half court and just let it fly. Buzzer beaters, he at the hash, you know what I mean? Just like no fear, no, I mean, just nothing. He's a, he's not just a killer. He's a, 
serial killer. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, That's so good. Like, vicious with big it. Shout out to Dame. Yeah, big shout for out show. to Dame. <laughs> you know, show. speaking of Dame, I also asked Dame if he had a question for you, and I have one from him as well, um, which actually makes me think of another one of your quotes, which was when someone asked you about coaching, you said, I ain't coaching because I don't want to coach no motherfuckers to make more money than me. Right. <laughs> does, that stay, does that stand? Yeah, because, okay. I mean, I'm just saying, it's like, it's like, I always got the, I have the utmost respect for coaches in the NBA. Yeah. And just, I mean, coaches worldwide, but in the NBA, it's totally different. Like, you you have all of these guys making all this money. Everybody on the team make more money than you. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. able, honestly, you're able to bring <laughs> these guys together mm -hmm. and get them to believe in one thing. Yeah. And that's playing the right way and winning. And having them all with the same mindset and the same goal in their head. And they buy into it, you know what I mean, to ultimately win a championship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's power. Yeah. And that's respect. You know what I mean? When you got these guys, you know, that make all this money mm -hmm. and they buying into everything that, you know, that you say. Yeah. And and it's, it's a lot of guys. You got guys on different teams with max contracts mm -hmm. that, that probably feel like, you know, they supposed to be the man. Yeah. But somehow they somehow some way to make it all work. They fit in a role, play their role, and then all the success comes. And that one guy that's mm -hmm. leading, you know what I mean, supposed to get his flowers. Yeah. Okay, well, then I wonder if you – I'll read Dame's question to you and if this is something that you would be interested in. His question was – let me get it right. Have you thought about just training current players, like not full-time but just working with I would them? love that, and I would love – I would love – um I'm glad you asked me that. And shout out to Dame. Shout, definitely yeah. shout out to Dame. And and <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to say nothing too bad. Um, you know who I'm talking to, but I'd rather help. I've I've I know I've forgotten more basketball than some people know, and I know I can help an organization get better. Um, I know so much of the ins and out in basketball and not just um, talent wise, as far as, you know, who's good, who's not. Anybody know Kevin Durant is good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I know other things when it comes to basketball. I know the look. Yeah. I know, I know the eyes. I know, I know the, um, the posture. Mm -hmm. um, I know things inside of basketball that other people might not, might not know that I experienced um, throughout my career and throughout my life. You know what I mean? I can get on a basketball court and tell if somebody's scared of me by just looking at them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can look at your demeanor and see that you don't want it tonight. Maybe tomorrow night or the night before, mm -hmm. but not tonight. And I just I, I just know so many things ins and out in basketball, relationships, how teammates react to each other, mm -hmm. what they have a problem with, what makes them play a certain way. Yeah. Are they a certain way through this quarter, the next one, the next one, or the next one? How they are in overtime? Mm -hmm. If the ball feel like a hot potato in their hand, yeah. you know what I mean? Do they want it? You know what I mean? I know those things about players, and I know with an organization, I know I can help. You know, not the 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 guy that's, you know, right up front and everything, mm -hmm. but just behind the scenes, I know I can help a lot of athletes. Well, okay, so when I asked you the question, you well, smiled. You smiled and you said, oh, okay, hold on, I'm trying to hesitate. Because everybody know who I would rather help. Everybody know that. Okay. You Every don't care to be specific? Everybody. I'm a six of for life. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all, I got six of blood pumping through me. Mm -hmm. So everybody know that I want to help their organization. Mm -hmm. I've been retired, what, 11 years? Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm not a part of that. Staff, some kind of way. Yeah, almost like a consultant. That'd be really that's, nice that's if all. you were. Even yeah. it was that. Mm -hmm. Even it was that. I would be. Hire I would be the, the happiest yeah. in the world. Yeah. And the money thing ain't got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's just just me being me and me being a sixer and wanting to help. I don't know why nothing's been put in place mm -hmm. for me. And I still love y'all. Don't get it twisted. It's all love here and ain't gonna never go nowhere. Mm -hmm. But I just, there's something that I just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I totally see that in your future. Even when I was like asking guys if they had questions for you, everyone just gets so excited. They wanna soak up the knowledge that you have. And I know clearly. They might not think I might not, they might think I might not show up to work or might come in my office and 
I mean, with my do rag on. Systematic oppression. That's what it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, they might, do you feel they like might think like... I won't dress right, and, yeah. and, and 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 I mean, I know I can't come in there dressing like this, and but that's you know what, what it mean? is. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's the problem. I mean, and, and it might be problem. that, but if if it is that, then address it. Right. Mm-hmm. Dress it. I don't have no problem with having no contract with stipulations in my contract. It's just like I'm signing an um, NBA contract. Right, right, right. I mean, you know, if you're a player. You know, I don't, have no, I don't have no problem with no clauses in my stuff. And, yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's up to me to accept it or not. Yeah. And, I mean, the, what they would gain from having you is so monumental. Obviously, right? um, somebody around there don't think like you think. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, like talk we, to them. They like gonna we think. We're going to get you a, a job. My manager going to be pissed <laughs> off with me after this problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're just being you. It's all good. I do want to pick both of y'all's brain with basketball, though, because I loved hearing different things you were saying. You can see, you know if someone's scared, right? You know if they're ready. You can just tell by looking at them. Right now, it's kind of a watershed moment in the NBA where we're seeing the younger guys become stars. It's new generations coming up. So I want to name a young player. Let's do like kind of the under 25 players. Y'all tell me what you like about their game and what they could improve in their game. All right? Mm. We'll start with Jason Tatum. What I like about what I like about his game is, you know, he does everything really well, right? I just think I'm just looking more from a leadership standpoint from him. Like mm-hmm. that's I think that's his next step in my opinion. Like okay. just really where he controls that organization and take that next step because you hear a lot of comparisons of like, you know, Kobe and different things like that. So mm-hmm. those are huge shoes to fill, right? Mm-hmm. Huge. <laughs> yeah. Right? Huge. So I just think for me, for what I see from him is just that that ownership of his locker room. And that's what I would like to see from him where I think he'll take it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I respect what um what Al's saying because Al looking at it from that perspective. Obviously he's been paying attention to that. And I mean it's Al Harrington. So yeah. obviously you gotta take it for what it is. As far as his everything else. Got it. Got I don't see it. Nothing wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't see nothing wrong. He in that killer category. Yeah. Definitely. I don't see I don't see, there's nothing that he can't do on the basketball court. Mm-hmm. So if there's anything um that he might need to improve on, obviously it gotta be something like in the locker room or something. Yeah, I, yeah, That's his it. talent is unreal. It's like he makes everything look so easy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's Cruise wild. Cruise control. Mm-hmm. Never look rattled. Right. Yeah, Ever. never. <laughs> it, like, I mean, since rookie year, just right. poised all the time. <laughs> uh, Trey Young. I also am a Hawks fan, you should know. So. <laughs> Again, um, I don't, and I know he's, and he's a leader, um, and they listen to him as young as he is. I don't see no flaws. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All I, I all I know is he's just going to get better and better. So all I would say is just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I don't see no flaws in this game at all. Yeah, and you guys can just tell me what you like about their game if you don't have a flaw. I like That's everything fine. about yeah. his game. Okay. Yeah, he like, he's Steph Curry 2.0. Right. Yeah. In my opinion. Just shorter. Shorter and got a little bit more. A little swag to yeah, him. Yeah, a little bit more swag. Yeah. yeah. Now, who got a little bit more swag? I think Ice Trey do. Steph got a lot of swag. <laughs> I know this but, but past like, not, playoffs, but Trey was showing about out. The Trey, like, Both talking crazy. to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah Trey Steph, crazy. Steph talks but he was in, but he was in New York. He was in New York though. Yeah. See, and you know New York, they gonna give it to you. New York, and Philadelphia, <laughs> they gonna give it to you. So yeah. he had no choice yeah. but to <laughs> interact with them. But I don't think Steph. I don't think Steph would have did that. Nah, he did too cool. Yeah. Well, the difference is, it's like how everyone was saying, Trey accepted that villain role. You know, he would go into these arenas that are away, and he would be the villain. Steph has a lot of swag, but he's not going in as the bad guy. He's just going as the guy who's going to shoot the lights out. He's going to just kill you. Right, get out of here. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What about John Morant, another young guy? Uh, Only only thing that, that might, he might, be anything less than um, a A, ah, and I would say that probably a, a A minus or or B plus. It's probably the only thing you probably could say is his jumper. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only thing you probably could. That's the only and and he, he can make that. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, just go, moving forward, yeah. once his jumper is basically automatic, trouble. Trouble, cause he's trouble right now. Yeah, trouble, he's, man. he's 
trouble right now. All yeah. the point guards. Right now. Yeah. All the points. Right now. Oh, and it, that go back to it. And he's a killer in a different way because he can do it in a point guard style. You know what I mean? He can, he can do it all kinds of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. With assists. You know what I mean? With scoring. He, he got the whole package. He can do it all. You just name it all the bad all motherfuckers. The young- <laughs> it's hard, right? All, all the, the young bad yeah. motherfuckers. But that is so exciting to think about just this new generation. Everyone is so good. In good hands. The mm-hmm. NBA is Adam Silver. Just good chill. Yeah, yeah good, for you. good for you. Everything man. is looking and up. And great hands. And, 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 and more so, standing ovation for the fans. Yes, yes. For the fans. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, they got the the product is there on the floor. They're good for years to come. Mm-hmm. But the fans are so great in arenas across the world. You know what I mean? They're there. They're supporting them teams. The games are great. The fans are back in the stands. And for all of us fans, I mean, we back. Yeah, you know I love I mean? it. Okay, one more young guy. Luca. <laughs> He in my he in my top five. Wait wait wait, top five in the league period right now. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, okay, then that, you got to name your whole top five. And do you agree with that? Luca is crazy. I'm just saying. I can't believe like, I ain't say because I, I, I was only able to name five killers. Yeah, you were, but right. you said there was a bunch of killers, so All we right. know. Yeah, yeah there certified. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were just saying some of your favorites. What why, why I like about him so much is that he. He just played the game. He played the game. He's fearless. Yeah. Like, it's just that, to this point, hot potato, all that, ain't none of that in him. Mm-hmm. And especially, no. And especially coming from where he came from, right? Because yeah. normally you think that, like, you know, those guys take some time to adjust. But he been talking shit the whole time. He really busting ass yeah. every single night. Yes. Any way that he wants. So it don't yes. matter. It don't matter. You can put your best defender on him. Mm-hmm. He top five, bro. Like, yeah, he, and it's, it's funny. I, and I don't want to oh, go through my, my top excited. five like that. But like. <laughs> nah, Al, if you say someone's top five, you have to yeah. say your top five. Like, because you got, we got to know who's in, who's at. You need the context. So you got Katie. Okay. One. You got Giannis. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. <laughs> God. I'm still going LBJ. I know he the OG. But yeah. L- I know he the OG. Man, I ain't putting him in no category. You didn't put him in the category. No, that's LeBron, LeBron, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought it was LeBron. 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 Okay, so that made it even easier then. So that means I could slide Anthony Davis back in there. You, you, you ain't going wrong. Yeah. For my top five. Um Steph Curry. Right. And, and, and Luca, right? And no Luca. James, no yeah, James. I, say you I mean, him. no James. I mean, man, averaging Michael Jordan numbers, thirty six, and I mean, scoring title after scoring title. We talking about killers now. We talking about straight killers. No, James is in it because I mean, because because I, I throw James and and then sometimes I have Kawhi, right? Kawhi throws me off because he just don't play enough games. I got yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, for a top five, I mean, and I. I love Luca's game, but I mean that's really high praise. Luca already right now in the top five. He got it. And then yeah. and James, this is the first time James hasn't, um, you know, has been hurt like this. Like throughout his career, he was he was never, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. He was always available. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Luca. I mean, he's a killer. He got a. He probably got a cult, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lying. That man is a killer, man. Yeah. Do you are you in pretty good agreement with his top five? Mm. Okay. So then name you just yours. James, right? I, yeah. I already named it. I already named so it. Your, so your killers are your top five. All right, I like that. Yeah, my 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 killers are. Yeah, because so you got to put James in there. James in it. Obviously, Katie no, in James it. James in it. Yeah. James yeah. I mean, um, so would you go James or Anthony Davis? As far as killers, yeah. I'm going with I'm going with um James. Are you crazy? <laughs> How many scoring titles uh ain't got? No, nah, you ain't got none. Of them. That's what I'm saying. We talking about putting the ball in the basket. That's what we talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? that's what we talking about. All right. talking Killers. All right, a couple more before I let you go. I'm curious <laughs> for you. Who right now kind of feels like the most AI? Like who's the new generation, Allen Iverson, to you? I, obviously, no one is duplicated, but who's closest to kind of what you brought to the game on the court? <sighs> Damn. Do I want to say... Ja? Yeah, I like Ja for you. Like, 
Ja. I don't know. Cause, cause I like Ja for you because, like, to me, Ja represents, like, hip-hop and all. Like, he, I don't know, for me, every time I see him, I see Little Baby. Right. Right? I just see, like, him, like, that, like... And that's kind of what you represent. Maybe with his homeboys and all that. You understand yeah. what I mean? And the way he And moves. John just cool. He just, and the way he moves. That's yeah, how you move. Yeah, he's moves. just cool. Like he's cool as hell. He wasn't extra. It was just you and crew thick. Yeah. You know what he I'm just, saying? So he, that's who... I mean, and then I, I, I would say, saying. like, I, I like to... I like to... When, when I... um When I compare, like... I can't never compare nobody to me like that. Because they're never my size. Like, everybody always... Like, they'll have a category, and they would be, like, the best little man or the best little man dunker. And I seen it, you know, on TV the other day, and I wasn't up there. And they had the best little man dunkers, but they had guys up there 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 you know what I mean, 6'3". Steph Curry is not a little man right. at 6'3". Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, and then when you try to compare somebody with me, there's never nobody my size to where I can say, okay, he get buckets. And he'll bang it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I be, you know, or, or and he'll clown you too. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I just, when I think of somebody, it's always got to be somebody that's three or four inches taller, taller than me. Right. So it's hard to, you know, put me in a category like, you know, if you think about it, what person six feet in the league yeah, yeah. that's going to give it to you? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't only, the only person I could think of that was on that level in a vicious state was Isaiah. Isaiah, mm -hmm. Isaiah coming. When that, that last year at Boston, before he got hurt, and the year before that, Isaiah coming, 28, 29 a game. You know what I mean? And then the injury, and then I look at Isaiah's situation, he was never put in a good situation again to where he could just be Isaiah and then everybody else follow him. You know what I mean? And, you know, because he went uh, to Cleveland. Cleveland mm -hmm. And he was, who was at Cleveland then? LeBron was yeah, there. LeBron was then there. he went to L.A. LeBron is there. You know what I mean? Then he went to the New Orleans. New Orleans. And then they got three stars already. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he was never, it was never, it ain't his game. He was just never put in a situation or, uh, uh, yeah, just a situation to where he could succeed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And shout out to Isaiah. Um, still rooting for you. I love you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, if anybody can get through this, you can. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. just stay up, stay strong, and believe in yourself, believe in God. Okay. Well, you know, they, they wanted me to wrap up. I do have one more for you guys. I also need to say, like, I have enjoyed this so much, just soaking up all this basketball from you guys and just hearing you talk about life and everything you've learned has been a pleasure, pleasure you for me. got to think about so. the person that's asking the questions. Oh. It, uh, it, can, it, it, it can only be great you know what i mean it can be real boring if you actually if you're not asking the right stuff <laughs> right. but it can be great if you're asking the right things oh, and not this and not that. the same things that everybody else asks oh well, thank you so much i've been I... doing this for 25 26 years and i get the same questions and the same stuff all the time so it's good that Throw some, you know, make make a pot of gumbo and have some different stuff up in there. Oh my god, hey, that is like such high praise. I yeah, I appreciate go. that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate we you. Got, we got a pot of gumbo, but I do have one more for you guys. Just, I think it's been really cool to see the different stages of life you've seen, like on the court and off the court. You have gone through so much. It has played out in front of so many people. Open book. You have, yeah. You have obviously. You're now this businessman. You've learned so much. I just want to know through life what you credit kind of just your resiliency to and what has allowed you to, you know, stay you throughout all of this? Both of you. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm probably be quick. Um, <clears throat> it was all my upbringing, you know, my uh, really close knit family. My mom was the superhero in my family. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my dad died young. And when I was young, and he was young, I was young, obviously, eight years old. And the relationship that me and my mother, kind of the bond we built from there, mm -hmm. is who I am today. You know? Yeah. And it's just, I'm the same person. Like, you know, most people, not everybody that knows me from when I was eight years old to 41 years old, they'll tell you I'm the same person. You yeah. Know? And I just really think it's just really just from the foundation that my mom laid, you know, mm -hmm. which was just around integrity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Doing the right thing. And what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And that's just kind of how I live my life. And I think that, you know, 
that's why I am who I am today. I love that. What about you? My family. Um, my family being there for me, me caring so much about them and wanting to be able to um, create a better life for them. Mm -hmm. um, and the second part was... What? How you've been able to stay you throughout everything, um, even if easy. bad things have it's happened easy. near you. And that's been the, that's been the easiest part for me, mm -hmm. um, is being the same person that the people that love me and the people that I love are able to recognize all the time, no matter what, the ups and downs, um, how much money, how much fame, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just, um, just wanting to be that as well, you know what I mean? And feeling like there's nothing wrong with it. So it was never a point where I felt like selling out and, and becoming something um, that I'm not. And selling out doesn't mean um, not doing all the right things that you're supposed to do or, or getting in trouble or, you know, being being mean to somebody and, you know, being nice is cool, too. You know what I mean? I love when um, a motherfucker meet me and they say, you're nothing like I thought you would be, or you're nothing like I heard you were, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you never met me, you know what I mean? You can't judge me if if you never met me. You can, Somebody else can have a different opinion mm -hmm. of me because of the circumstances of when I met them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You might have wanted to uh, have a conversation with me or have me sign something or take a picture while I'm feeding my daughter, and I tell you that this is not the right time. Can you wait till I finish this and the person... Well, fuck you then, motherfucker. You ain't better than Kobe Bryant anyway. And I like Kobe anyway. And matter of fact, I don't watch basketball, motherfucker. And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, and then you ask them about Allen Iverson yeah. a week later, and they say, well, he's an asshole. You know what I mean? And this guy asked him to take a picture or whatever, and he wouldn't do it. But they ain't going to leave the part out that he was feeding his daughter or whatever. To tell half I mean? the story, yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> um, well, I, I'm really happy that we hopefully were able to give, to give the full story. I think that's important. So thank you guys so much. I know we, we got a bunch of this, so we should well, probably I, end the... Up there too. You got oh, up yeah. There too. We should probably end the interview. I, I feel yeah, like we yeah. got to test it out. <laughs> you <just got> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you all so much for your time. Well, this is amazing. Yeah, this is great.